Welcome, everyone, to the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour, our second round of the season. It's the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am here in Russell County, Alabama at Uchi Creek Campgrounds. And we are set for a spectacular day of archery. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, sitting alongside Darren Christianberry, who last year finished second in your category. Now you're in the booth with me after what was a crazy rainy day yesterday. Yesterday's conditions were about as bad as you could ever want to shoot in as an archer. The babysitting your equipment is horrible. You know, you're shooting lenses, you're shooting clarifiers. It's just a rough day trying to keep everything dry. Scorecards were a mess, but today was as perfect as you could ask for because it was overcast. We had even lighting all day. We saw scores grow up, go up dramatically, and we should be in store for a really good shoot-off today. We have six matches, all pro categories, on deck for you today. And let's take a look at the standings because the first match we're going to have here is senior pro category. And tell us, Darren, what is 410 points in relation to what we call par course? Yeah, we shoot 40 targets in qualification. So if you shoot 40 tens, you have 400 points. Anything above 400 means you were hitting bonus rings throughout your round. So you can see Richard Owens hit bonus rings. He ended up with a 410. Jeff Hopkins, 402. David Powell was one under par with a 399. Scott Price, 98. Harold Kogar, 97. Only 13 points from top to bottom. So it's actually a pretty good race. So uh, no guarantee who's going to win this one. And we keep track of those bonus rings during their qualification rounds. And so, for example, Richard Owens hit nine of those, but Jeff Hopkins hit 11. And that's important if we get to a tie towards the end of the match. So senior pros on deck, and this is our first of our unknown distance categories. Darren, tell us a little bit about the unknown. Yeah, the unknown distance, there's going to be a box out there, and everyone is just guessing the distance. They're using muscles. They're using definition of the target. They're using depth perception to figure out this distance. So there's no range finders allowed. It's all off practice and target recognition. So it's a very, very neat skill to have, and when you're successful at it, it is fun to do. So it's time now for our first pro pressure point shoot down. So here's PJ Riley to welcome the archers to the field of play. All right, here we go. Let's get this started. We're gonna start off with our senior pro division, our fifth place qualifier with a score of 397 from Shinston, West Virginia, shooting for Darton, Harold Coger. And our fourth place qualifier with a score of 398 from Martinsburg, West Virginia, shooting for Matthews, Scott Price. In third place with a score of 399 from Columbia, Virginia, shooting for elite, David Pyle. And our second place qualifier, from Lacona, Iowa, shooting for Matthews, Jeff Hopkins, with a score of 402. And our number one qualifier with a score of 410 from Rose Hill, Virginia, shooting for Hoyt, Richard Owens. All right, so Richard Owens, our top scorer. And, well, looking at the scores, you know, you have an eight-point advantage. But, well, Darren Christian Berry, uh, Mother Nature's thrown a little bit of something at us right now. Yeah, the wind is not a factor where we qualify at. It's swampy. It's big brush. It's a lot of undergrowth. Wind's not a factor. Here, we're in the wide open on the riverbank, and there is a hard wind hitting us right in the face here in the booth. So it's going to be left to right for the shooters. It will be a factor. Right now, it's not too bad, but we've had some big gusts, so I anticipate some arrows moving in this wind. Looking at Jeff Hopkins, shoots for Matthews. All right, gentlemen, 
We'll start your one minute now. And they have one minute on the clock to execute a shot. Now, they have their 10 minutes of judging beforehand. And you're going to see some umbrellas come into play. Tell us a little bit about why we're being obstructed by an umbrella. Yeah, that umbrella is for the win we just mentioned. It's uh, you got to have it to try to keep the archer steady, try to keep the bow steady, try to minimize that movement of that arrow drift. Good look at Harold Kogar there. Unknown distance, right, max shot, distance Richard is, is at supposed to be 50 yards plus swings. or minus, right? I mean, yeah. occasionally they can they the can get them there, longer. They do, but it's not tall. it's not common. All right, let's look at those Eight scoring rings. Eight for Richard, I believe. Mm -hmm. Correct. Jeff Hopkins. Next, we're going to go to Jeff Hopkins now. That so first target you looked at was the Stan Mule Deer. Now we're on the elevation on the Havelina. 12 for Jeff. 12 for Jeff. He's Bradley making the move gate. right off the bat. And then we're going to move to the Shibuya Impala. That big fella right there is not who I'd want chasing me. Mm -hmm. Confident. Okay, so that's going to score an 8. Next up is going to be the gold tip Russian boar. And that's going to be Scott Price. What a story Scott Price has yes. coming back after eye surgery, cancer on his left eyelid, hard time seeing, just like difficult for us here eight. in these conditions. <laughs> and eight. And for Hogarth. The light here is very flat. It's overcast. Every now and then we see a ray maybe mm -hmm. poke through. Yeah. We're watching the shoot off in the booth on a big screen TV here, and it's hard to see where these arrows are landing. So we're mm -hmm. going Right, called, an upper. called an upper. Good shot for Harold there. So now what happens is the archers are going to move to the next target. So, for instance, you have Richard Owens, your number one qualifier, who starts off at the stand mule deer. He's going to rotate over to that second target, which is the elevation javelina, and the entire crew shifts. So for Harold Kogar, who started on the bow doodle grazing doe, he's going to move to our first target, which is the stand mule deer. Now, they did have that 10 minutes of, uh, you know, time to judge distance. And so how do they do it? They're going to write it down on a piece of paper yep. or is it just memory? <laughs> they typically, and what, what I would do is I would write down what target I'm starting on. If I was starting on the Shibuya Impala, which is target number three, I'd write that one down first. I would just go down to the gold tip Russian boar, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd fill mm -hmm. out my numbers, write my number to the side. I may put a plus or minus out there, depending on how my first one goes. I may want to make an adjustment. Did I hit low? Did I hit high? Uh, you know, you got to get calibrated for different conditions because this is totally different than where we qualified at. And there the scores have changed. You can see that Owens now with a four-point lead over Hopkins, upper left-hand part of your screen. We're looking at Harold Kogar, who is AKA a Digger. AKA Digger has yeah. moved himself into third place. And if he called that upper, from our vantage point, it's hard for us to see the cone. It looks like he did call the upper. So there's a cone that the archers can move from the back of the shooting box to the front of the shooting box. From so what I've seen so far, he has no intention of finishing in fifth. He came in in fifth, no intention of finishing there. Back to back 12s for him. And we can't tell you here in the senior pro category, which is a judging distance category, exactly what the length of the course is. But if you stick around, our next category is going to be senior known pro, followed by another couple of known pro categories. And we can tell you exactly the distance these targets are set at. Ooh. Mm -mm. Yeah. He didn't like that. That was definitely a, a bobble for Hopkins. Gave back what he gained there on that first target, unfortunately. Like to have a dollar for every arrow he shot in his life. <laughs> you you would be extremely rich. Yeah, I'd, I'd be a wealthy man. Twelve for David Pyle. David Pyle with a twelve. So he shot upper. that upper. Yeah, mm -hmm. caught that upper. Tell us when we talk about uppers, Darren. What are we talking about? Yeah, there's two twelves in play. The low twelve, which you can see, uh, I don't know, depend on which way the animal's facing. Five o'clock, seven o'clock. It's always in play. You don't have to call it. But you do have the option to shoot that high ring, and if it is the upper twelve, if you do shoot it, you have to call it. If you accidentally hit it and don't call it, it scores as a ten, and vice versa. If you call the upper and accidentally hit the lower, it scores as a ten. It's now out of play. 
And of course, keep in mind, the 14 is in play as well. So if someone wants to get really gutsy, and we definitely expect to see that in some of the matches coming up in the women's known pro category, which will be our third match of the day. Paige Pierce is on a seven run win streak and she comes in in fourth place. So the chances that Paige Pierce is gonna be gunning for 14s, I think is pretty high. Yeah, yeah, if she wants to keep that streak going, she's what, 10 points behind the leader, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, that's two 14 into 12. Is it common? Yeah, it can happen. Is it likely? Eh, very likely with her, but this win could be a little bit of a factor there. So now our fifth place archer coming in, Harold Kogar, is now in third place at a 421. So Owens continues to lead 428, then Hopkins at a 22, Kogar at a 21, and then we have Pilot at 19 and Price at 415. Good look at Richard Owen there. He survived the rain in big fashion yesterday. He shot eight up in the torrential downpour, which was a really, really solid round. And he gets a nice solid 10 ring on that one. And you know, for us here at Competition Archery Media, Darren, normally after our first day of competition, we interview the leaders of each class and it was so much rain that it really, it had an effect on our cameras oh, and yeah. we just didn't have the resources to do it. Our stuff started to break down. It was bad. I mean, it just, everything we had was soaked. The scorecards were a mess. It's <laughs> just, oh, it's the worst conditions you can have. All right, so. Was that up or called? Yeah, so that's the Stan Mule Deer and it was called. 12 points. Good shot, Scott. Scott Price, what an absolute legend, what a story. He talks about Jeff Hopkins being one of his best friends, and they have never shot together in a shoot down before. So Price is just happy to be here. Richard Owens still enjoying a six point lead. Good look at it, Richard again. He's shooting those long back bars, such a. Not normal, unorthodox maybe, but you see a few more of those sets out there now. Good 10 for him on that long Impala. 10 for Jeff Hopkins. 10. On the Russian board. Owen's coming in steady so far. He's got 8, 10, 10. So he's given two points back to the field in terms of that par score. But right now you got to look at Kogar and how aggressive. Is that Hopkins That's again there? Yeah. Golly, that guy. Uh, on that gold, is that that gold tip Russian boar for Hopkins? Another 12. So he gets two, gives it, a, he gives it back, and now gets another he's two. He's not going to go away. I mm -hmm. promise you he's not. Yeah, if there's anybody who knows how to play this game. And this is the thing. There's one thing if you can range find and you can just set your marks. And, mm -hmm. But in this game, you've got to know when to take the risks, yeah. right? I shot right next to Jeff again, and I've said it before on the broadcast if you've listened, but Jeff hits the stuff that nobody else does. And he did today. I mean, he stepped up to a deer, you know, 50-yard deer, probably 12. You know, he goes over to a Wolverine that's close to 50, if not 50, 12. You're, you can 12 those, but you're not supposed to, and he always does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why you can never count him out because he hits the stuff most people don't. All right, so of our five regulation targets – we're now on target number four, and it moves that quickly. But Darren, there is the possibility of a last chance, mm -hmm. last chance archery, last chance arrow, and how do we get that, and who's gonna shoot that? We're gonna shoot five regulation arrows here, and then anybody within 10 points of the leader will be eligible to shoot the sixth and final last chance, last chance arrow. So anything can happen. If you're within four points of the leader and you get one more chance, you gotta just let it all hang out there and go for that 14, so. All right, so right side of the field, Jeff Hopkins is already at full draw, and he's getting after it because the one-minute clock has started. As we wait for these two that are on our Stan Mule Deer and the Elevation Havelina. That's a good look there on that split screen. Mm -hmm. David Piles at full draw, ready to go on the Muley. I think some of that right stuff there's got to be win for him. It's got to be. Scott went for the 14. It looked like he did. He just missed right, it. Up, David Pyle, currently at 427. <laughs> That's such a small ring to shoot at, too. Needs to catch up soon. Um, There's an eight for David. It's like no matter how much you look through the binos or what we call glass in it, sometimes it just doesn't hit. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, being 11 points behind the leader, two targets to go, I really don't blame him. He's tied for fourth, tied for fifth. Mm -hmm. No place to go but up. You know, you can't finish worse than fifth. So good job, Scott. 
So close. It's going to be an eight for him. And it was funny, too, Darren, because I asked Scott Price. He said, oh, look, I'm just thankful being here after all the health issues I've had. And I said, really? If you find yourself in third or close to a podium, you're not going to go for it? He's like, well, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Competitive spirit never never goes away. And, and you know, for, for Price, he thinks he's probably the third oldest shooter in the field. Oh, wow. 64 years old. Okay. Yeah. I guess I didn't realize that. I've known these guys for so long, it's hard to imagine that they can be in their mid-60s now. That would mean you are in your. We're not talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Celebrating the twenty fourth anniversary of my twenty ninth birthday. <laughs> Do that math. Yeah. Senior pro, our fourth arrow has been shot as we are wrapping up our scoring here. Still four points between Richard and Jeff. Bonus rings. If Jeff can close the gap a little bit more by hitting a 12 on the next one, that's a close arrow right there. That's a clean cut 12 though. That's really solid lines for a foam target right there. Yeah, it is. So it looks to us pretty clear to me anyway, that wouldn't necessarily be it. It's got to contact that line at some point, even if it pulls it in there. We actually had an arrow call in the range today. When I looked at it from the top, I said, there's no way that arrow can be in. But when I looked at it from the bottom and shined the light on it, I was like, there's no way I can call that arrow out. Mm -hmm. So we're getting one view right here. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a flat screen straight on. Um, they, it, it was just out. But sometimes they look out, and they can be still touching or rolling that line. So it's it's hard right, to go by, off of Richard one view. If I would have just had one look at that arrow today, I definitely would have called it out. But a second look, and there was no way you could call it out. All right, so now there's got to be some strategy that's going to play in for, I think, for Hopkins right there. And that's going to be, you're actually four points back as we reset the scores, 448 to 444. Hopkins has more bonus rings than Owens does, who we're looking at here in the Hoyt jersey. And so for Jeff Hopkins, he's got to really think about his strategy on, is it time to go for a 14? And I can tell you that the Stan Mule Deer is not the closest target that we have on the range. There's a good look at Jeff right there. He really needs a twi – ooh, that fired quick, and he went right underneath of it. That eight will be detrimental depending on what Richard does. Oh, the wind just picked up as yeah. well. You can see it just over the shoulder of Scott Price. Good, good solid. Yeah, Scott. solid ten. And middle. Ten, yeah. So Richard's going to take a six-point lead into right. the final arrow. Jeff Hopkins coming in second place. All right, so we're going to go nine. to Jeff Keep Hopkins, who is on that stand mule deer. Good look over the shoulder of David Powell. Just off. Eight. He yeah. shot a 10. Mm -hmm. So we know that Hopkins is in for an eight. He probably needed one more yard on his site right there. And we're actually experiencing just a massive gust of wind, and this is what we're – so good timing in terms of the archers weren't at full draw. We're at scoring right now. Mm -hmm. But this is what some it's archers can be here. in for. And Ten, this is where two. that one minute to shoot yeah. your arrow here in ASA could be really Outside. beneficial to Ten some archers. Yeah, because wow. if you're at full draw and that wind gust comes in starts moving you all over the target, your mind starts going, oh, crap, mm -hmm. do I have enough time? Should I, should I let down? That's a good 10 there by Scott Price. For Scott. Uh, especially after the length of that hold. Let's see how this all shakes out with the math, but I know Richard and Jeff will shoot the sixth arrow. Harold Kogar currently at 441 and still within And then up points. to Digger, huh? Kogar has been making some moves since he got Looking here in fifth place. Strong. He's actually sitting in third. Ten for and that's 10 for him. A little too low. Going for it, though, <laughs> calling that upper. If you're just joining us, this is our second round of the 2024 Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour here. It's the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am. Raducci Creek for the Pro Pressure Point Shootdown. We've gone through our five regulation arrows in Senior Pro category, and now we're going to have to determine who is within 10 points of the leader as we go to our last chance archery, last chance arrow. In fourth place is Scott Price, and in fifth place Scott is David Price. Pyle. In Let's give him a round of applause. Fourth place, David Pyle. In fifth place, I think those two archers are going to be out of it. So Richard Scott Owens with a commanding lead, and I, I think it's going to be just Jeff Hopkins and Richard Owens. 
And Harold Colgar. And Harold Colgar, that's yep. right. Yep. Harold's Sorry, Harold. Yep. He had moved up to third. Yep. Richard's in a good spot, having a six point lead with just the 14 ring in play, meaning if Richard shoots a 10 and somebody a shoots a 14, they can't catch him. So he's in a really good spot. Six points, six points with one arrow to go. I would feel pretty good about myself right now. Yeah, you're in the driver's seat, right? Yes. All you really got to do is just think center. You get to shoot last, so if those guys do hit a ring, all you have to do is hit that big 10 ring, which when you have to hit a 10, it's not that super easy, but as many arrows as these guys shoot and as comfortable as they are shooting, these, they, shooting at these rings, uh, hitting a 10 shouldn't be too bad unless Scott really backs them up. All right, so he's gonna. They're actually going to be shooting the hyena. That's going to be the last chance archery, isn't that the hyena? Yep, it is. All right, so from your experience, Darren Christianberry, size of the scoring rings because they do vary slightly. Yeah, I think the ten rings right at five inches. Mm -hmm. I think it's right at five inches, but the twelve rings are just not much bigger than a, a U.S. fifty cent piece or a half dollar. Um, I don't know the exact measurement of it, but I know if you miss it by a yard, you might clip the line if it's around 40 yards. But basically, if I was going to say yardage here, uh, every every yard you're off is about an inch on the target. So you need to be within one yard to ensure you're going to hit these bonus rings. All right, so as they're setting the targets, there's two things. Number one, they're picking a random spot on the field of play to set this target up. Additionally, Scott, who's in charge of all this stuff for ASA, is really he puts the archers at a random place as well on the range. So they're not shooting from the shooting boxes that they were. So now they're given an opportunity to judge yardage. Mm -hmm. Now this is very important though, because you know, as part of the integrity of the sport, as we see Jeff Hopkins changing his sight there, can anybody like look at his sight or is it no. You have, you have to block like the yardages? I, I think it's actually a written rule. I don't know if it's ASA or IBO, but there is a written rule where you have to have a yardage. You have to have your sight tape covered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to be, if you were standing over someone's shoulder looking at them set their sight, that's, uh, I would call that unsportsmanlike conduct. So yeah, 100%. You're not supposed to do that. Right, or so lean to somebody and say, Darren, what'd you get? Yeah. yeah. What yardage? Hey, that's, well, how far do you think this is? You'll yeah, hear that. That's highly frowned yeah, upon. That, yeah. <laughs> in the, in the uh, known categories where you have a range finder, you'll hear that often. So yeah. Hey, what'd you get? I'm just curious what you get, you know? Just trying to check with your group to see. But, uh, you know, listen, in the rain, you, you can see that umbrellas are used here even in the wind, but in the rain, umbrellas were used to try to protect some equipment. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it, it helps to be a nice person. <laughs> Yeah, in a good group that's friendly, uh, so you definitely get umbrellas because it was it was something else yesterday. Yeah, you need uh, you need help when there's days like days like yesterday. You have to have assistance out there because if not, you're All right. miserable. Start your one minute. Now. All right, so Harold Colgar has got a 451 guaranteed third place. It's the last chance archery, last chance arrow. Chances are Kogar is just going for the 14. you got yeah, nothing to lose this at this is, point. This is 14 or nothing right here. This is a good target shoot, too. You can see those black dots all around those rings. Great references at full draw. Very easy to aim at this target. He can probably see. I don't know what the distance is because I can't see the target, but he can probably see that 14 ring through his scope when he gets to full draw, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on that breeze to settle down. So much so, unfortunately, our signage for the last chance archery, last chance arrow had to be moved because they don't want it to start blowing around. All right, so he's got one minute here. If I'm him, if I'm Kogar, I'm just chilling. I'm going to see if this yeah. wind kind of calms down for a moment. It's actually steady to picking up, so he's he's eventually going to have to come to full draw and then either aim left or bubble over a little bit. He's going to have to do something to aim left of that ring to hit it. And that's exactly what you were talking about, at least from our camera view. Mm -hmm. If you look on the screen, there's a lot of definition. Ooh, and you can see that there's sun sunlight, just yeah. poked right through it and just highlighted it. Yeah, he's he's just turned his light back on, so he's got to be down to like 20 some seconds now. Got to be. All right. Well, it is what it is. You got to let it fly. Keith's holding his umbrella, but someone needs to have his clock too to make sure he fires it within that one minute. 14 or nothing. That upper left hand smallest ring. Keep pulling. Keep pulling, bud. There you go. Hmm. Well he, done, Harold. Well done. <laughs> I 
I don't know if Mike's making fun of him. <laughs> he must have went at the 12. Yeah, I guess he went for that 12, just dropped a little bit low, and he was able to catch the 8 line. There is that line that defines the 8 ring, and if he was outside of that, it would have been a 5. So you can see the 14 ring in the upper left-hand corner. If you follow that outer line that's just on the top of that, goes all the way around, that's that 8 ring. Yeah. The hardest thing, I think, for a lot of people that are new to 3D archery is, is seeing the core. Mm -hmm. The core line itself, because those are replaceable cores, yeah. they don't really count. So right. you got to look at the scoring rings. All right, here goes Hopkins, who's six points back. You know, I got to thinking there, Harold may have been shooting at that 12 because he knows how aggressive Jeff is. If Jeff shoots a five here, Harold gets second place. Ooh. And that hit. Now, one of the things to note as Hopkins let that fly, and he's going to get an eight on that one, he shoots a pinky release, yep. which is really an interesting release where he's actually pulling through the shot and allowing his pinky to set that release off. And it, it looked like, at least for this competition, that might have been just a little too hot. You can see the release. His thumb is on a barrel, but it's just, it's a, that's just holding the release. Yeah, it almost looked like it surprised him really bad. Mm -hmm. I think Richard just needs five points to win this thing. If he hits this animal, he's going to win this tournament. So if you're ready. Because Jeff moves to a 460 with that eight. Yep. Richard needs two points, so if he hits this animal anywhere, he wins this tournament. For Richard Owens, coming in here with an eight-point lead, and he's able to fight off his competition, and now with the possibility of taking home the title. The Rose Hill, Virginia native resident pulls back. It's foam. <laughs> and a nice center 10. And that's your champ, Black Eagle Dart and Pro Am in our senior pro category. Second place, Jeff Hopkins. Third place. And family members in attendance, Joe Pitt and Tony Taza, yep. according to him. Yep. His buddies. That's right. He won K50 way back in the day. Second in 2021 in senior pro am. And third in 2023 now comes out and wins it all what a day for Richard Owens there's Tony Taza he's new to this winning stuff we'll get him over <laughs> to get on the headset and we can have a conversation with him in tricky conditions and with other archers getting after that 12 ring Gets a nice win for Hoyt as well. Well, Richard, you wanted us to chat with you, and here you are. Congratulations. What an outstanding win for you. How you feeling? I just can't believe it. <laughs> I want to thank the Lord first for helping me this weekend. It's been a long time coming. I've shot this since 2003 and uh, put a lot of time in it. Haven't been shooting great at home, and I got here and the rain and stuff was just terrible but I, I don't know i shot good in it and uh i don't know lord just wanted me to win it i guess richard a big guy named jeff hopkins told me years ago that if you want to win out here you've got to catch some breaks yep. and with the weather yesterday pretty much perfect shooting conditions today i would think you had to catch some breaks along the way yeah i i started i normally shoot all uppers and uh i figured out real fast after about five targets in the rain that i was losing yardage and i was shooting low so i just started calling lowers and started hitting them and shooting big numbers and still hitting the lowers so if i hadn't have done that i wouldn't i wouldn't have made it well buddy congratulations uh, well-deserved win we'll we'll see you at the next one all right thanks all right so there's your champion in the senior pro category richard owens takes home the number one plate more Archery coming at you from the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am right here in Ooch Creek. Stay with us. sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Whoosh. 
The X-10 is the most successful arrow in competitive archery history, accounting for far more medals than any other individual piece of sporting equipment in Olympic history. Easton introduces the latest innovation of the X-10 lineup, the 4mm Parallel Pro. Parallel Pro offers legendary X-10 precision for all forms of archery. Elevate your precision. Your journey to the podium begins with Easton X-10. I have to shoot the best or there's just no point in doing it. I'm blown away at just how easy each arrow tunes right out of the box. Ultra Arrows, the pinnacle of precision and performance. Sub four pounds, eight feet per second faster. Our goal wasn't just light and fast. It was how light and how fast. Yeah, buddy.